There's no real difference between the two rotor systems at all. Blade inertia is independent of the number of blades. There are examples of high inertia and low inertia in both semi-rigid and articulated systems. The problem with flying in the mountains is there are very few landing areas. Therefore, I recommend flying at much higher altitudes to increase the availability of available landing areas. We have three variables here, wind, weight, and density altitude. A good rule of thumb is 1.5 times the rotor diameter and then adjust from there. I'm not sure how many times I've scraped the tail skid in an auto rotation. It has happened. Remember that the purpose of that tail skid is to warn the pilot of a tail low attitude. Develop a feel for the proper attitude through practice and training with a flight instructor. Best tip I have is don't do it. Practice auto rotations should have a flight instructor on board. They can prevent bad habits from forming, and they're trained to recover from deteriorating or bad auto rotations. Auto rotation training should begin in the pre-solo stage of training and then be conducted throughout the entire private pilot course. For example, our private pilot syllabus at Robinson introduces auto rotations in hour 10. Our regulations in the U.S. require auto rotations be introduced prior to solo. It's not really a question of which control is moved first. Rather, it's the configuration that the aircraft is in. For example, in this R-44, the correct configuration is 90 knots and 90% rotor RPM. There are two variables. First is wind and weight that will affect the maximum glide distance.